Hello my friends and welcome back fellow painters to my painting channel and in this video we're going to be painting this really cool looking uh, little ammo monkey. So this is a small metal miniature from the Ark World uh, Miniatures game. This is a game made by a really really cool very small family run uh, company called Warp Miniatures and they make some really really amazing fun and interesting models. So for this one we're going to paint the little ammo monkey and we're going to have some fun painting and bringing a lot of the character to life out of such a small um, and fun little model. So we're going to start by using one of my channel favourite colours and I'm going to use a Dark Rust 302. This is a great, great dark brown colour and this is going to be a great colour that we can use to sort of build up multiple different tones and colours from so that this will give us a bit of a mixture between sort of the monkey's fur and of course the, uh, the bag and things like that. So that's all I'm going to do is just cover all of the areas that I want to be this nice dark brown and all of the areas that we're going to build up the brown tones from. So as you can see, I'm just painting the bag and across all of his hair, um, trying to uh, avoid sort of painting this across his face and things like that because they will be uh, painted different colours a little bit later. So I'm just using my uh, basing brush, so I'm not using any kind of special brush for this, just using my uh, sort of old worn out basing brush because we don't have to be too perfect. And then once that's dry, we're going to use a beige red. This is a great, great base uh, color for skin. So this is a great base tone that you can use to paint skin. And what we're going to do is we're just going to paint this around the face. Uh, we're also going to paint this across the hands and we're going to paint this across the feet as well So this is going to give us that contrast between the areas of the monkey that are more skin toned um, and less hairy uh, it, As in comparison to the uh, the dark brown being on all of the areas that we're going to keep uh, quite hairy and quite furry So as you can see, I'm just going to use a detail brush now just to cover the areas that we want with this So like I say the hands the feet and of course the face all around the ears is going to be important and as you can see I've also got the dark brown just sat around the uh, the hair that's sticking out of his chin. Now just being careful with this so that I can cover this quite evenly across the hands without getting this uh, too much over all of the certain uh, bits of brown that we've uh, painted. But just on the back of the hands here I'm just going to use the very tip of the brush to create this little bit of a um, like a texture so that it looks like uh, his hands um, and his arms are connected by fur. Now once that's done then I'm going to use a small amount of Mayhem Red. So this is just a nice dark red. This is a scale 75 colour uh, but you can use any sort of red that you like. What we're trying to do is use a kind of middle of the road red so we don't want this to be too dark, we don't want this to be too light and we're just going to paint this across the hat just like so. Just trying to be careful not to get this across the skin tones and of course the uh, the browns that we're using for the fur as well. Just using that fine detail brush as well. Just trying to cover all of those areas in this nice red. Just like so. We're just going to paint all of the hat and then we're also just going to paint he's got a very very small waistcoat on as well. Which may be difficult to see when you very first start painting the model but as you come across some of the details and uh, you base some of the areas you'll see that he's got this little waistcoat that goes down either side of his body and then just a little bit around the back of his neck as well. So just carefully now going to base these colours in this uh, sort of red tone as well. So we've got this little waistcoat and hat showing through in this nice little red colour. So. This will allow us to match him to the rest of our little Imperial Warband. So I'm painting a lot of these different things so that I can play a few games on the channel and hopefully I'll be able to play a game or two of Ark World with a friend or two and be able to make some cool battle reports for the channel. This is one of my big um, sort of plans for the year. I'm hoping to really sort of expand uh, the channel uh, with, with a few sort of gameplay videos as well as painting videos uh, to go along with them. So once that's done then I'm just going to use a small amount of ghost grey. Uh, now someone did mention to me the other day that ghost grey is quite difficult to get hold of now. So um, ghost grey, if you don't have a ghost grey you could use a sort of very very light grey whitish tone. Something that I would possibly use for this would be a uh, AK Interactive silver grey colour instead of the ghost grey. That's a fantastic tone that will have a very very similar sort of effect. Uh, with the ghost grey or this uh, silver grey that I mentioned, uh, they're great, great colours for being a nice light tone, uh, but without being too white. So this gives you the opportunity to build white on top. And that's all I'm doing with this is painting the little feather plume on his hat and of course painting inside of those eyes as well. I'm then going to use a gunmetal, which is a nice middle of the road sort of dark silver colour. 
and with this we're just going to paint across uh, the silver areas of this little handgun that he's got here and this is just going to give us a little bit of uh, depth and character to this little gun that we've got this is one of the old sort of flintlock style guns we're just going to paint his trigger um, across the uh, the sort of barrel of the gun and of course all of those little um, metal bits just across the side so the mechanisms the firing pin and things like that we're just going to cover all of these as you can see i've used the dark rust 302 the dark dark brown that we used earlier on the uh the fur i've also painted the gun with that as well because the stock of the gun and the wood of the gun we're going to paint a different color again so we're going to have a few different earthy tones on this model and it's really going to bring him to life now once we've done all of the base colors to make this a very very simple painting i'm going to cover all of this using uh, the same wash so we're going to use a soft tone for this one so this is going to be a nice light sort of tone this isn't going to be too dark it's not going to be too over the top and that's all this is going to do is allow me to paint this nice sort of uh, very very sort of light brown color just across all of the model this is going to sit in all of those recess points you can already see this working fantastically well around the bag on his ears so you can see See, this is really picking out all of those deeper darker details now the cool thing with using something like a brown wash like this is this is going to tie all of those colors together um, and it's also going to add to a little bit of the dirty sort of rundown and, and more rustic more sort of natural look and tone to the model when it dries now if you'd prefer you could always use a brown tone on brown and then a red wash on the red parts or just like a very light gray across the plume on his hat it's completely up to you how you want to paint i just like to try to make things as simple as possible and tie all those colors together in a very nice quick and easy even fashion and then give you guys just something to work on or maybe something that may help you and and, and give you something to sort of uh, look towards and maybe try out yourselves as well once all of that is dry, then I'm going to go back to using the Dark Rust 302, but I'm also going to use a Flat Earth as well. Uh, normally when I mix these paints, I always tend to go with a 50-50. So I try to use half and half. So that would be one blob of the Dark Rust and one blob of the Flat Earth. And that's all I'm going to do here now is we're going to slowly, using the very, very tip of the brush, use a very small stippling effect. So we're going to use the brush strokes themselves on the model to create depth and to create this illusion of fur so it's going to create this uh, illusion that there's darker bits of fur underneath this lighter tone so what we don't want uh, for this kind of painting we don't want to go over the top with uh, really nice um, lines and really nice sort of uh, blends and blend in the highlights and things like that we're using this stippling or dabbing technique and we just dot in the very tip of the brush as you can see that's creating and allowing us to have a nice um, dark tone underneath and that creates the illusion that we've got this depth to the fur just like so it's nice and simple it's nice and easy and it has a fantastic fantastic effect it has a really really great way of really making it look like this depth and tone uh, to the model and to the miniature and as you can see just on the arm you can see where all of these little fur uh, sort of textures and all these little bits are really starting to bring that lighter color towards uh, the fur there and i'm just going to do the same thing just all of the way around the tail just like so just dabbing stippling dragging my paintbrush into different parts and just kind of creating that that texture once that bit is dry then we're going to use the flat earth on its own so we've used our first highlight which was half and half now we're just going to use the flat earth alone and this is going to be our next level of our highlight and once again we're going to use that stippling that dabbing effect that texture which is going to create little little small bits of fur and small illusions that there's uh, sort of contrast and darker bits of fur and lighter bits of fur we're not going to blend those colors together we're not going to create a really smooth transition we're going to create this uh, like I say, this texture, this furry sort of uh, illusion across the model. You can really see now with this highlight tone just how much that's starting to create a bit more um, character out of such a simple, simple, simple uh, effect. Such a, such a quick and easy way of painting, but such a cool, cool technique as well. There you go, just using this to highlight all of those little furry bits just across the legs the arms and there we go you can see just where i'm picking out little sort of almost uh, lines of fur and things like that and we're really starting to bring those highlights through 
and this has given us a really nice mid-tone sort of middle of the road sort of brown for our our monkeys uh, sort of hair just like so adding a little bit across the beard bits just sticking out of his chin here just like so there you go fantastic and once that's done we're also going to add a little bit of beige brown this is a very natural uh, step up so this is a very natural easy progressive um, way of just highlighting these so this beige brown is a really really nice very very light highlight to the flat earth that we've been using now you could go in a half and half step if you wanted to first just to build up a little bit more color and a little bit more um, contrast uh, but I've just gone straight in with the beige brown instead and this time I'm going to be a little bit more selective about where I place this so as you can see I'm trying to catch mostly across sort of the top areas uh, bits around the hair coming off the elbow and around the sort of arms and things like that and again I'm just still using that very very same stippling technique and this is really going to build up that highlight layer now so this is going to be the extreme highlight where we kind of want the light to catch so we're not going to paint this on the underneath of the legs or the underneath of the arms this is just going to be there to build that illusion of light that that sort of highlight point um, and as you can see it's really really bringing a lot of that color and a lot of that texture together on our little monkey I really really love this little model and it's something that I've been wanting to paint uh, for a little bit now uh, I picked up the Ark World box for my birthday and this has got to be one of my favorite models out of the whole box I think it is absolutely fantastic so once that bit is dry, we're then going to use a leather brown from the AK Interactive. Uh, this is, uh, again, if you've uh, watched any of my other videos or if you are um, been on the channel before, you'll know that this is how I'm going to build up the leathers. So we're going to use these uh, AK Interactive colors now, and this is going to be a completely different tone and texture to the browns that we've used for the fur. And this is really going to create this awesome uh, contrast, this real difference of sort of color tones. So we've got this really light sort of middle of the road kind of color for the fur. But with this, when we paint this up, this is going to create this more sort of orangey leather kind of uh, feel. So this is going to create a bit more of a leather illusion on that that ammo bag that ammo pouch that our little monkey is carrying for us and there you go you can see just covering a little bit of the bag leaving some of the darker tones and some of the darker colors underneath again creating that illusion that texture and just building a little bit of character with it as we go and once that's dry then we're going to go half and half with a leather brown and deep brown so again this is 50 50 so just one blob of each and then we're going to slowly build up some of the highlights across this so i've watered this down quite nicely so this should manipulate onto the miniature in a quite nice even fashion uh, it will dry down quite well and it won't overtake the miniature it's not going to be uh, too overly done it's always nice to to make sure that you water down your paint so that the paint itself uh, creates a nice even um more sort of uh, pleasing to the eye sort of blend on the miniature as well here we go just like so just using a little bit of scratching and dabbing across the the, the sort of strap here and there you go just building up where we want some of the color and some of the character on the bag just like so once that's done then we're just going to use the deep brown on its own and this is where we're going to start to pick out some of the more extreme highlights and really sort of bring some of that color and some of that lighting together so now we're just going to be as careful as possible just using the, the scraping techniques that i was just talking about so using the very tip of the brush to really create uh, a little bit of this highlight and where we want the sort of scrapes and things like that as you can see yeah still using that sort of stippling that dabbing effect building that texture go using the brush strokes to our advantage just like so and there you go look at that we're starting to get some real texture out of this bag now it's starting to look really worn and just like so really really nice nice and simple really nice sort of worn leather effect and i mean you can also push this a little bit further you could go with a very sort of very very small layer of a nice sort of orange tone just to pick out the real real extreme highlights on the straps and that will really bring out uh, some of the colors and some of the highlights as well so once that bit is done we're going to go back to the skin and we're going to use the beige red again so we're just going to go back to the original color that we used for the skin this beige red is a great great base tone and then we're just going to slowly build up some of the colors around the face so whereas that wash has just sat in all of those recess points especially around the eyes 
um, and just underneath the nose and things like that. We're just going to build some of this back up, leaving that uh, wash sat in all of those recess points, and that's going to create that depth that you see just around the face. That's going to create a real nice highlight to the face, but it's also going to give some good shadows and things around those eyes, eye sockets, the nose area, and things like that just like so and you can really see that that depth is starting to show through already we're going to do the same thing just across all of the hands so picking up the fingers the thumbs all of these little bits trying to be very very careful uh, especially across uh, the fingers and things across the gun so that we don't end up uh, pushing this too much and losing some of the textures and uh, some of the depth where the, uh, the the wash is sat in between all of those uh, little fingers and toes so here we go, just picking out uh, the same thing, just uh, picking out all of the skin colour just across those toes as well, just across his feet there, just like so. And it's some nice highlight tones, some nice highlight colours. It's a great way as well, using the very tip of the brush to just uh, use some of those brush strokes to add in more of the illusion of where that fur meets the skin. And that creates a really added uh, extra little bit of character too. Once that's dry, we're going to use the beige red and a basic skin tone. Again, if you've seen the channel before and you've seen me paint skin, you'll know this is one of my go-to, one of my favourite ways of painting skin. It's very, very easy, uh, but it looks incredibly, incredibly good. It looks like you've spent way more time uh, painting the skin than you actually have, um, and the reward at the end of painting uh, the skin tones like this is so, so good, considering how simple it actually is. And that's what we're going to do using, again, some nice watered-down paint, which is going to slowly build up the highlights. You know, just across the top of the ears of course across the top of the eyes and going around the eyebrow points just the front area of the face as well and again just down those fingers just picking out areas that we want the highlight and the light in to, to really look like it's picking out some of that color and that skin tone just like so and again using the very tip of the brush to create those uh, scratches those sort of uh, brush strokes that are really going to add depth to the model in a really really cool and simple fashion so once we've done the grey, uh, well, once we've done the skin rather, we're then going to move on to use the silver grey. So as I said uh, earlier, if you don't have or you can't find the ghost grey, you can use the silver grey. This is a great alternative colour. And that's all I'm going to do is slowly build this back up by using this silver grey. And as you can see, using the tip of the brush, we're going to pick out some of those uh, plumes and some of the, the feathers and some of the uh, details on the feather while leaving areas that the wash has sat in to create that illusion of depth. Again, very, very simple to do. Great, great way of painting and such a simple, great looking effect. The feather now is starting to have a little bit of depth, starting to look like we've got a little bit of depth and highlight, and it's been done in such a quick and easy way. From there, I'm also going to use a Baal Crimson, and this Baal Crimson now, again, this is a scale 75 paint, so we're just looking at a nice light crimson red colour. We're going to thin this down quite nicely, and then we're going to slowly pick out some of the details on uh, the red point. So we're going to go with the little waistcoat first, just around uh, the edges, and as you can see, using those brush strokes, once again, we're creating that illusion of folds, that area where you can see that the light is catching on uh, some of the folds of the cloth, some of the clothing, just like so and we're just going to build this up nicely and build this highlight up in a few nice layers that's the good thing by using uh, the nice thin down paint is that it allows you to put multiple layers in to really create that vibrancy that you like so you could do this three or four times and really be selective about where you place this and the highlights will then really really stand off and show through and they'll really really sort of make uh, the red points really stand out they'll, they'll pop on the miniature the reason why I chose to do the uh, the hat and the jacket in red is because we do it so many earthy tones and earthy colours with all of these different browns that I really wanted something a little bit more vibrant that would stand off the model and really attract your eye to the model as well. Although we've got quite a few different browns and we've got the silver as well and things like that, it's always nice to have this, this pin colour that you can really, really sort of drag your eye into the miniature and really look at it. So once that's done, we're going to use a Kokum Copper, so I'm just using a nice light copper brown. This is just a nice, nice light brown colour. You'll notice on the channel I use a lot of different paints and a lot of different brands, a lot of different colours. That doesn't mean you've got to stick to painting the exact same colours or collecting the exact same ones. There are ways in which you can find alternatives. You know, there's a great app. I actually have a video on the channel which will show you guys um, how to uh, find different... Um, 
different alternative paints and alternative paint brands to the ones that I use if you don't have or can't get the brands that I use. Um, but it's always nice to use so many different paints because that's the best way to learn how to paint. Using loads and loads of different brands and loads of different colours actually progresses and allows you to learn how to paint a lot, lot better than just sticking with the same, same colours and the same, same brands all the time. And that's all I'm doing with this is using the very, very tip of the brush. I'm just dragging this across the weapon, so just across the uh, the wooden sort of handle. And we're just creating this illusion of wood grain. And you can see how simple that is just by creating lines across the wood. Nice and easy. And again, a great, great technique. I'm then going to use a small amount of black, so we're just going to go with a nice Vallejo black. This is a basic flat black. You can use any black you like, um, and you can use any sort of brand or anything like that for this. And that's all I'm going to do is just paint a small circle in the eyes, so just in the eyeball areas here. Just going to pick out a small black circle. This is quite difficult to do, so just take your time with this. Again, use the very, very tip of the brush. I'm painting these just looking up towards where he's pointing his pistol, just for comedy value because it will look great to have him looking up as if he's pointing the, the pistol up at an ogre or uh, whichever. Now once we've done the black I'm then going to use a very small amount of white and again using the very 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 tip of the brush just going to pop a small dot just by the uh, the black point and that's going to create this really cool looking cartoon eye and really add a lot of depth to that eyeball now using this nice vibrant white i'm also then just going to pick out a few extra bits of detail on these feathers just to kind of add a little bit of that extra highlight and really allow it to pop on the model and make it look really really fantastic and stand out just like so so again using the very tip of the brush and just controlled, controlled brush strokes to create this great looking technique. And all in all, that is our little ammo monkey done. Now, if you wanted to, you could add a little bit of dry brushing or things to the silver. You could bring the silver back up a little bit if you like. Uh, but in my world and in my little uh, army, some of my weapons and some of the weapons that the guys use, the little monkey and things, aren't always perfectly clean. So sometimes it's nice to have that little bit of brown and that little bit of dirt. It adds to the depth. And there you go, as always my friends, thank you so much for tuning in, thank you for watching, thank you for all of your amazing, amazing comments. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of this little ammo monkey and if there's anything you would do differently, or just simply ask me a few questions, I'm always happy to, uh, to talk with you guys. Thank you again, please take care of yourselves, and hopefully I will see you guys on the next one.